Hello, today's topic is how we design controllers using a state space. It's basically rather than a previous uh, control design, we used the output feedback. Now we are going to control the state variables of the system. And we'll start by discussing a number of techniques. Uh, pole placement is the simplest and you can visualize that very clearly. We know if we have a system uh, of the N order, the N order system will have N poles and also will have N state variables. The characteristic equation will be of the order N and the state space representation will be in the form shown. It's um, x dot ax plus bu, yes, x dot here is ax plus bu, and y is the output matrix n. The thing to remember here, we are multiplying matrices, so if x is of the order of, it has uh, n rows and one column, a, the state matrix will be n by n square matrix of course this is also n times one and b will be n n uh, rows and one column uh, c here will be the opposite will be one times n of course x is n times one when you multiply these two have to be the same and you end up with the dimension of n and one n rows and one column. Anyway, the block diagram here shows the system and the equations show the all familiar uh, state space representation where x are the state uh, variables. The Close the open loop. This is open loop now. There is no control. It's just the representation of G, the system transfer function in state variable. And we, the roots can be given uh, from, from this equation here. But that's for the open loop. What about taking the state variables, each one of them, multiply it by again, and use feedback so that we end up with poles on a different location. Why we change the location of the poles, the closed loop poles, which we're going to talk about now, to improve the performance of the system. So what we do here is this is our original system. And what I do is I just take x that's a vector multiplied by gains if x are n for an n order th system k will also be a vector of the order n then the control signal here u is modified it's now u equals r minus k x and of course remember that x is still n rows, one column, and k it would be arranged. These are constant. It will be one row and n columns. So when you substitute u from this equation here, you get a, this matrix. And this actually now gives us si minus our new A has been modified, it's A minus B, K, and this are, give us the location of the closed poles. How can we find the gain K? We can find the gain K if we know the desired poles, we can create, we can formulate the desired characteristic equation, and then from this equation here, find an equation in terms of k and then equate the coefficients of s squared and the desired equation equals s squared which is 
has the variable k and we'll demonstrate how to do it. Alternatively, actually, we can do it using MATLAB, which also we're going to discuss. So if we know the desired pole locations, it's mi1, mi2, mi n. Well, actually, you know it as mu, this Greek symbol. You say mu1, the proper pronunciation I've been told is mi1. Anyway, if these are the locations s equals uh, mi1, then you can build a characteristic equation for the desired system on this form. This is the characteristic equation the state space presentation will give you, then equate the coefficient. You can find also k by MATLAB using the command k place a, with this, the matrix A, B, and capital P here, that desired pole locations. The place command does not work if you want to place two poles, two identical poles. Then there is another command which is based on Eckermann's formula, which you can be used then. In order to demonstrate, we consider this example. Where did I get this transfer function from? If you remember system modeling, system modeling, we use physics and other principles to obtain a differential equation that represents the system. Differential equation like this, when you transfer to the S domain and you find Y over U, you get this transfer function. And if you can't from here get to there, then you have a problem. Now the state variable formulation, we assume the state variables X1 and X2, and we use the phase variable canonical form, and we can construct this this is a, x dot equals a plus b u, and this is the c matrix. Now I would like to place the closed loop pole at minus 2 and minus 2. Minus 2 and minus 2, I told you for this case, place is not going to work, but you can use acre command. We are going to do it here analytically. How I'm going to do it, the required closed loop poles required is this will give me this characteristic equation but I can also calculate the characteristic equation in terms of my system matrix and also the gains which I don't know and force this to equal to the desired let's expand this when we expand it S i minus a, this is a, plus b multiplied by k. I don't know k, k1, k2. And I would like this to equal to the desired. This is the desired. Where did I get this desired from? It's from the specification. Expand this, I'll end up with the left-hand side, an equation in terms of k and the right-hand side, an equation which is the desired. The coefficient of s squared has to be equal. It is then 4 plus k2 must equal to 4, which means k2 is 0. And then the coefficient here, k1, must equal to 4. And that's what I get. And these are my gains. This is a very simple example. We consider another example. Consider another example here, and it's a third order system, and we would like to place the poles at this. Of course, if we use the method applied in example number one, it's going the procedure is going to be very elaborate, but now we're going to use MATLAB. And using MATLAB, first I will construct, represent the system from transfer function into 
state space and I can do that also using MATLAB but here I just formulated it by uh, analytically so these are my state space representations remember system is third order third order system and I have three state variables then I can use that's the signal flow graph I can use uh, by the way now you don't need to specify that I is square root of minus one you can just input a B uh, and actually P here is the desired poles from there and then I will use that place a B and poles could call it anything you can enter it as an, a, an array as a vector and that gives me k1 k2 k3 these are the gains which can be used now in the negative feedback of the state variables so x1 will be multiplied by k1 x2 by k2 and so on now we look at implementation using simulink Another example, if you look at this example, obviously uh, that's the transfer function that's represented here is g equals 4 over s cube plus 5 s squared plus 4 s and there is no free term. And then use, you specify transfer function use the command transfer function to state space state space and gives you that matlab will give you i just rearranged things here to, no this is a mm, this is b c and d you can use place a b and these are the desired where did I get that from? It's specified. It's not listed here. Implementation using Simulink. This is just using integrators for the relationship between X and X dot. And then I have X1. I take feedback 5. Where did I get the... F well, no. This is actually... This is just constructing the system. The 5 is this minus 5. It says x1 dot here is minus 5 x1 minus 4 x2. That's minus 4 x2 plus 0 of x3. So there is no x3 and the plus. 1 multiplied by u, yes, that's u, that's the input, and that's 1. The feedback, I'm going to change the color of the pointer for the feedback. The feedback gains are 4, 24, and 40, and these are k1, k2, and k3. I take x1, multiply by 4, and that's negative feedback plus u. This is the step. And that's the Simulink representation. Well, we could do it using integrators when the system is second order, third order, maybe fourth order. But when it's much higher order than that, it will become very complex to construct the, such a Simulink model. So what do we need to do? We, we can use, there is actually in Simulink a block which is a state space block. The prob problem with the state space block, it's the block which it says uh, x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx plus du input to that will be u 
and the output is y. If you enter the matrices in that block, i.e. this matrix A will be this one, and so on, it's simpler than constructing this. However, the output will be y. The output will be y, and y is cx, but g is 0, for g is 0, y is all cx. We don't, when, in, in feedback control, I need x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. I need to output here, I need to output here, not y, I need to output here my x's, x1, x2, x3, and so on, xn. And this block as it is, when you input a, b, c, and d as your state space representation is only given to, going to give you y. To make it give you the state variable so you can use them in a feedback, you will need to play a bit with the C matrix. We'll see that uh, in the next slide. You see this representation here is much simpler, but here I need x1 to xn. This is not my, my y, so I have to play with the C. The C matrix here in this particular example said I3. I is identity matrix. In other words, I said my artificial I, I, Y artificial, is C artificial, which is identity matrix. In this case, it's 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, multiplied by X1, X2, X3. And that will give me the state variables. I can then use the gain k in the feedback, but I will have to play a bit with this y artificial to get my actual actual y, which is my actual y is cx. And then uh, I can find which of the state variables contribute to the actual y and what are they multiplied with, and I can do it here. So that's much simpler. Generally speaking, the identity matrix here, if you adopt this approach, will be the dimension will be the rank of the system matrix A. And we consider another example now. In this example here, we have G and I used uh, transfer function to state space uh, command. So I got the representation in the controller canonical form because that's what MATLAB gives you always. Then I implement this and I will want it feedback. My poles at minus five, uh, minus eight, minus five plus J5, minus five, minus J5 gave me this k1, k2, k3. Implementation can use this. And this is the 904, yes, 904, 376. Or you can use this. The problem here is y, y equals cx. So actually, that's c. In this case, it's 24 x3. So what I did here, what I get here is all the state variables. And then this is x1, terminate it. x2, terminate it. x3, multiply by gain of 24. This is actually my y. Here I have x as a vector, not x dot x. Multiplied by the gain. Oh, but the gain now has to be arranged so that I can multiply vectors together. So how can we do that? Uh, of course, the first reminder is A is entered, B, 
and C is I3. I3 is not my C. I3 is identity matrix of the dimension of A, which in this case, the system is third order. And the output gives me that. I also need to adjust the gain. I enter the gain as a vector and I use this option multiplication k multiply by u, i.e. you multiply the input to that block with k to get the output and then it's a negative feedback here. I believe this is simpler and I advise you to practice it so that you can master it and you can use it uh, in, in higher order systems. Now we have a slight problem with this feedback. Here I have the same example as the previous case. This is the same example. I just replaced k's with zero. K's are zero means there is no uh, state feedback. With no state feedback, I get this performance. I get this. This is no state feedback. And second case, I will enter the case. I entered the case and I got this state feedback. Let's examine the two cases. It's clear that the top case here, the system is much slower than the bottom case. So while we successfully implemented, while implementing this, this implementation, successfully shifted the poles to the desired position, we ended up with huge, there is a step input, and I end up with a huge error here. That's my steady state error is huge. Well, how can that be? Remember, we are not actually feeding back the output at all. And when we use CISO tool, we used the output feedback, compared it with the input, and that was our error signal. And the error signal is applied to the plant and the controller. Now, we are just we are not feeding back the output. We are taking feedback of the state variables, not the output y. If you wanted to track an input signal, then you need to reduce, we need to do something to reduce the steady state error, which is quite substantial here. How can we reduce the steady state error? We know if we have one free integrator, we will eliminate the steady state error to a step input. So what we are going to do now, we are going to modify uh, our controller. Two problems with the present control. We don't track the output and uh, because we don't track the output, we end up with huge steady, steady state error. Now we modify the controller with adding an integral action. What you have here is simply x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx. This is our state variable, state space representation. What we did so far, we added, we took the state variable, multiplied by, again, again, here is minus k. This is, I put this minus, and that's why this is positive. It's still negative feedback. I use the minus here. It's a bit confusing, but uh, you understand. What I need to do now is to track this y. So I need to uh, take this, and I have output feedback, and I will add a free integrator. To add a free integrator, in effect, I added another state. I call it xi, the state of the integrator. So this free integrator will eliminate the error. And I use, again, for that free integrator so that I can eliminate all the steady state error. So this now is a changed system. So, in addition to the state feedback, which is here, now we have added this integrator. Also, we added the output feedback. 
Look at this system. My original system, this is just the system representation. X dot equals AX plus BU and Y equals CX. Why I'm using colors, it will become obvious later. Now, what we did, first we added this. And then we would like to add another state variable. I call it XI. So when you add another state variable, obviously we are increasing the order of the system by one. And that's what it says here. And there will be another pole which will need to replace and we place it away on the left hand side so that it will be a slow pole. It's not going to affect our performance. So this representation here has changed. My system is no longer this A and this B and this C. And what I use this A and this B to find this K. using the place command. I can't use them anymore to find the gain, this one, or indeed the new gains here because I changed the system. Uh, this will need to be modified to accommodate this new state variable. How it's modified, I will give an example assuming, assuming that this system is a second order. So A is two by two. I'm assuming that to illustrate the process, but it's a general concept. So assuming a second order have two state variables, and here the elements of A, and these are the elements of B. And Y is C1, C multiplied by the variables. This actually is not correct, this equation. This should not be there. This was copied from the previous equation down and was not removed. So this is the original system, which we know very well how to handle it. A, B, place, A, B, and the poles, it will give you K. Now what we added, we added XI, XI dot here equals minus y plus r. r doesn't come into play in our equation, so we'll add it using uh, simulink. But y is c x, y is cx. Still y is equal cx, although I changed the system. If you look at here, this part here, this part hasn't changed. So I can substitute in this equation xi dot and now I got xi dot in terms of minus y, y is cx, I had this is the correct y equal cx plus r. My new system, my old system had x1 dot and x2 dot, x1 and x2. My new system will be third order increased by one. It will have x1 dot, x2 dot, and xi dot. I know this part, x1 dot and x2 dot, I can actually express them in terms of x1 and x2 and b1 uh, and, uh, and the bu, and this is the representation for x1 and x2. xi dot, x i dot i added minus c yes minus c if x2 yes plus r yeah so that's my new system so this is my new a this is my new b and we'll look at my new c as well y is not affected at all by the additional state variable Let's now try to partition this matrix. So I can look at this is my original A and it comes here as my original A. 
this part is my original B and it comes here as my original B. This part here is minus C. That's, that was my C. It's minus C. What about I added these zeros? Why did I add these zeros? They don't affect any multiplication. They don't affect the equations when you expand the matrix equation. However, you have to have to multiply. This matrix has to be 3 by 3. And this is 3 by 1. And you multiply, you end up by 3 by 1. And so on. So I had to add these two zeros. This zero and this zero. So I will express the new system state variable by this blue part is my original A. This brown part is my minus C. The green block here is B and the zeros. How many zeros I added here? I added in the top part here. I added these two zeros, this and this. This depends on the dimension of A. If A was 10 by 10, I will have to make it square matrix, the new part. It will have to add all the zeros. So I added zeros 2 by 1. This 2 actually generally is the rank of A. And I added also this zero here, which is this. And uh, for B, I added this zero, which is this. So I end up now with this equation. I can call it A nu or A star or whatever. This, this B is my B nu. And we'll illustrate this in an example, but if you are doing it in, mat in MATLAB, so A now, A now is the A, let's say A nu equals the original A. Then with the same row, you add zeros of rank of A. In this case, it's 2 and 1, but this generally is rank of A. The second row is minus C, and you add 1, 0, space 0. And your B nu will just, you add another row with a 0 in it. We will illustrate this by an example. And the example, we consider this uh, transfer function. This transfer function, if you put this equals to 0, will give you the location of the open loop poles. And the location of the open loop poles will be s equals minus 0.7 and equals minus 4.3. Now, what I wanted to do, I wanted to change this system. Of course, you, you would recognize this as uh, on the, uh, the poles on the real axis. And if you implement, if you implement a, a unity output feedback, unity output feedback. So if you have that's G and that's you your input and this is minus plus uh, and this is uh, y and this is just this is unity output feedback this will place the poles closed loop poles will be if i can find it i wrote it somewhere i'm absolutely certain closed loop poles at minus 1 and minus 4. Even minus 1 and minus 4, you, you know that the system is over and will be very slow. What we want to 
what we want to design. We want to design a state feedback controller was obviously integral control and to eliminate all the steady state error. We wanted to design a controller to place the poles, poles at minus eight plus or minus J 11. What does it mean? That's minus eight. So my new poles are going to be there with this is 11. Obviously, this system is better. Uh, it, the damping coefficient is lower than the previous case when it was the poles were minus four and minus four. But what is the damping coefficient? Can I estimate the damping coefficient from this? I can, I think. So if I connect this, this is angle theta. I know that the damping coefficient is cosine theta. Theta is 10 minus 1 from the geometry. This is 11 and this is 8. 10 minus 1, 11 over 8 which will give you 53 degrees cosine 53 degrees will be 0.588 and that is the damping coefficient so when we specify the lo uh, the poles at a specific location it means we would like them would like the system to have a certain damping coefficient from that damping coefficient you should know by now that the damping coefficient is related to the phase margin. Well, actually, we can see it here that the phase margin, these are away from the, the boundaries between stable and unstable. What we are going to do, we are going to solve this example using MATLAB and Simulink. So remember, all what we did so far is review the state variable uh, feedback. We found that the state variable feedback will give us, uh, in most cases, a huge steady state error. And then we introduced a new pole, an integrator with uh, a gain. And this integrator and the gain also implemented output feedback, helped us to eliminate the steady state error. We will do that next using MATLAB.